15. Okay. We, why are we here? We're here because the journey took back to Liberia started 400 years ago when our first ancestors were ripped from these shores by their, not of their own choice. And 202 years ago, uh, they decided to come back to this land, right? In this land, there was coming back, there were many hardships. There was strife, there was uh, war, there was hardship, but there was also love. There was also brotherhood. And this was also the place where the idea of, the, uh, the very revolutionary idea that black people could work together among different tribes, different backgrounds and regions and form a nation. Okay? This is unheard of in human history. Yes. What this country produced is remarkable in human history. Yes. That people that had no uh, background to each other could forge together with not all, not all love and peace, sometimes strife, but somehow they made it work. And when you see the resilience in the, the, the Liberian people, uh, as something I've never seen in my life. People are real fighters, they're go-getters, and they deserve a chance. Like any other country in Africa, Liberia deserves that opportunity, as Brother Henderson will definitely tell you. Deserve that opportunity and our support. If not more support, because this is the country where our ancestors landed, established the first republic on the shores of Africa. So with that, I would like to uh, introduce Brother Henderson, and he can tell us about what he's doing. And then I got a few more people who's going to go down the list. Not in, in importance, folks. If you're not called second, don't, mean, don't, don't take it personally, OK? <laughs> you know, we want to get everybody speaking. Everybody has something important to say, OK? And so hopefully we'll have somebody from the tourism board come here and speak. Hopefully the mayor of Monroe will show up. You know, so it's like it's so. Brother Henderson. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Carl, excellent. Uh, thank you, brother, for calling uh, for this historic event. I want to thank everybody here, and I want you guys to give yourselves a round of applause because it's very few of us Pan-African leaders that are taking the mantle of our abolitionist forefathers and coming and repatriating back to the land of liberty. I get kind of excited for money, so thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Johannes Abashe Barak. That's my ministry name, established in uh, South Central Los Angeles, California. And uh, I have a history of uh, being an organizer for the diaspora and the African Union diaspora. And uh, on the United States side, I was an Af uh, activist that fought against police brutality and did economic development policy writing uh, through an organization that was formed after the uh, Rodney King riots. And uh, we formed ENOUGH, the Economic National and Privilege Foundation in 1993. And uh, my pastor at that time was on the corner of Florence and Normandy. Reverend Benny Newton that saved uh, original uh, uh, Denny uh, from the Hatred Gangster Crips. And I grew up in that element in South Central Los Angeles. I was there when the Crips and Blood started in this uh, history. I was an organizer for the gay truce and I wrote the policy. I was one of the first young men that was bust to desegregation that uh, we were able to go out to the white communities and desegregation, uh, as far as I'm concerned, crippled the black businesses and black community. But let me move forward. I, after doing the gang uh, police brutality march in uh, Orlando, Florida, the KKK came after me. 
Uh, I was an organizer for the African Union and was selected by uh, the Shape Center in Houston as a sixth uh, region diaspora caucus delegate to the African Union. And after organizing the police brutality march, the plan came after me and I got in trouble with the law enforcement uh, and protecting myself against the KKK. And I was in Orlando and made it to Battleground State after going to Atlanta, working with the, the civil rights leader, uh, Reverend Hosea Williams, that did the March on Selma for Dr. King. It's Phil Jewell. I was the last organizer he trained. I started off in South Central Los Angeles with the Gang Truth. I did the Gang Truth for the Angel Cross Watts, South Central Love, and so forth. God, God has gifted me the right policy, and I wrote a policy uh, after I returned home in 2016 for dual citizenship to the Black Caucus for our 44 African Americans to be able to come to the land flowing with milk and honey, the land of liberty. When I found out from one of my elder uh, Pan African sister about Garvey and everything that he did, and picking up the mantle of leadership of our abolitionist forefathers and writing this policy for dual citizenship, I came in the bicentennial year 2021, and I came here and I came with Dr. David Horn. Uh, Dr. Horn has the sixth region of the Expo Caucus in uh, Los Angeles, California, and they had a meeting here with the Minister of Tourism and Trade. Uh, Luis Siwa with Siwa Liberia, and they formed a unity, and uh, they, they have come together with the first library in Liberia, Pan African Library in Liberia, ten-story Pan African Library down from Ash on Ashman Street at the top is still under development. I put together during that conference. Young people that were working in the lower levels of the Wheel administration, they were uh, uh, making 100 to 150 dollars a month working for the government. We organized to lift Liberia's economy, youth, uh, Yale, youth and power legislative law for 18 to 38 year olds, the 12 sectors of the economic uh, agenda uh, sector in, in Liberia to train our young people in the passing development to take back the economy. After 1980 and the coup, from 1980 when uh, the American Liberians, uh, there was some dissension between the indigenous tribes and the American Liberians, uh, they grew apart and uh, they were assassinated and the country uh, plunged itself into uh, a downward spiral economically, went from the top gross domestic income nation in Africa to the bottom today. It went from a tourist destination uh, of all over the world to the dirtiest place, uh, uh, location, one of the dirtiest places in Africa. Why did I come here? I came here to lift Liberia's economy by faith. I saw they gave our country away while we allowed them, the 16 indigenous tribes uh, and the American Liberians as we uh, created dissension amongst ourselves. Our adversaries came in and took the economy, took our minerals, took our uh, import-export, took all our businesses against the law. There's a law in the book called the American uh, Liberalization Act where certain businesses have to be in the hands of Liberians. They're not being enforced, they're in the hands of foreigners. Lebanese, Chinese, Arabs, Indians, uh, or white Europeans, uh, Caucasians, and let me give you some historical history and background of our abolitionist Pan-Africans. This country, is the Pan-African cradle of the planet right here. There is no Pan-Africanism without Liberia. This is the home of Pan-Africanism here. 
also a pledge you can after is coming from the land of my captivity, America, where I grew up. America, KKK, that's what I call it. And I applaud you guys for coming and just seeing the, the, the actually it's an opportunity here. It's a vast opportunity because now we understand we need each other. So just like our ancestors when they came in 1822, this is the history that has not been taught to our young people and to our indigenous tribes and even to our African Americans in America. This history I want y'all to take back and teach our people. When my ancestors came here, they landed on Providence Island, half of them died of malaria. Malaria almost took me out three times. The ones that stayed, they, they went out and they talked to the chiefs. They talked to the chiefs and the chiefs gave them the young people. And they created the first industry of shipping industry and they made vessels of war. And they went out and they were anti-slavery police on the high seas. Our people in the 16 indigenous tribes used to go out and conquer the Germans, the British, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Dutch, the French, the Germans, the Britain, Every European power had to bow down to us on the high sea. We were the ones that controlled the passage when they come across the lip, coming from the south and come up. And as soon as they come up to turn around and go north, we intercepted the ships. That's how the Congo people got here, okay? Our ancestors, and the chiefs, we told them of the horrors of slavery. They gave us the young people, and if you guys have not been to the fishing villages, you need to go to the fishing villages before you leave because they still go out on the boats, just like the disciples of old uh, in the scriptures, the African Hebrew scriptures, they go out and fish on the sea. And they know the current. We had this vessels from America's best Navy equipment, and we had iron ore here, we had best wood here, we built ships. This is the history is not being told. We conquered the Europeans on the high sea. We made them submit to us and give, them, give us all of their goods and we released the Congo people here. That's a history that has not been told. Since Coming 200 years to the bicentennial, uh, we were going to the Black Caucus under uh, the 501c3. We had the rare call the Economic National Privilege Foundation, enough, and we wrote dual citizenship uh, to Liberia. We asked for a dual citizenship passport authority where we would issue the passports to ourselves here on this land mass and bring those billion dollars of visas to Liberia. They, the the uh, WE administration, the policy we sent, lift up Liberia uh, economy with the president of Black Wall Street Global in the United States, in the north, in Oakland, California. Uh, they took and they did something else with it. They tried to uh, create a referendum to let non-Africans become citizens when our constitution of the original constitution said this land we acquired uh, by we acquired we we uh, um, we will this land we will this land to our brothers and sisters this land we acquired by honorable purchase we bequeath it to our brothers and sisters in America should they be free of slavery. This was in 1847 in the Constitution, the original Constitution, our forefathers willed this land to us. We have inheritance in this rich land. Let me explain something to you. Liberia today is sitting on trillions of dollars of gold, diamonds, iron ore, it also has coal 
It has the only rainforest on the planet. So we went to work. And in January 2022, I believe uh, Reverend Zoba was uh, at our first meeting on our way forward. Uh, and we had the, the, a lot of ministers and a lot of our young people. And we decided to uh, create a financial instrument using climate change to finance the development of our organization and the country. We have journeyed from January 2022 to now. Last Wednesday, we made history. We got a legislator that has uh, championed our $12 billion green economy bill. And we lobby for Liberia to be out front of the United Nations $100 billion commitment to Africa for climate change. So we're here to lift up Liberia's economy. I thank uh, each and every one of you for being here. There's opportunities here. We're here. I'm on the ground. Our organization is on the ground. When you're here for whatever your needs are, you want to land, you want to go on business, whatever you want to do, we're here to partner with the uh, Black African and Infrastructure Organization and UNEA, uh, all of the Pan-African organizations. You guys are here by divine providence, okay? You guys are the seed that is going to cause our brethren to come over and repatriate back to this land because you guys are in America and they build in the world not to keep nobody out but to lock you in. Thank you, brother. Give him a hip for